This may be, perhaps, the most important knife video you ever watch in your life. I mean that. It is. And it's not sexy. Sorry. We're talking utility knives for an overdue update on the type here in the TMP Knife Show. I've done it some years back. It's time to revisit the subject and re-emphasize the importance of you carrying a dedicated utility knife on your person all the time. Why? Primarily, and this is why the video is so important, to save you time. That's right. Don't waste your life sharpening knives. Now, don't get me wrong. I am an advocate for the sharp blade. Every knife that is in my pocket is sharp. Always has been. It will wear my own edge or a really good factory edge. One or the other. I don't carry around dull blades. That's not what I'm saying. But... I would use a utility blade in a lot of cutting circumstances over whatever I'm carrying for the day. So my carry for today is, man, that's got a sweet sound, Axis Lock, a Benchmade Griptilian. And this one, I haven't used that much. It's just coming into rotation. It's got a sweet clip on the other side. I'm going to show you later on. Keep subscribed. Keep watching the show. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Great blade, right? Not a super expensive knife. Not saying it is. And it's got a good blade steel. I think this is 154, this version on it. Yeah, 154 CM, not CPM, but 154. So a decent blade steel. And I can use it. I can cut carpet with it. I can cut cardboard. I can do some heavy duty cutting with it. For you trades people out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But the dealio is this. It will dull and then it's going to need work. Now, I don't think there's a huge difference of how quickly a knife blade steel dulls. There is a lot of discussion, a lot of dissension on the subject. I don't care if it's LMAX, M4, Bowler, M390, S30, S90, S110. Doesn't matter. VG10 and some others, maybe a little bit softer, they will dull a little bit quicker, for sure. It's going to dull. It's going to need some work. That means you're going to have to go sharpen it, and that's time. That's my point. It's time. Now, maybe you like to do it recreationally. And if you do, I say, awesome. Good for you. I'm happy for you. Awesome. But I have a lot of things going and I jump into the sharpener and then I jump out. I don't use it as recreation. It's kind of for me like, uh, and yes, there is an A10 here. I'll tell you about it in a second. Again, it's kind of like reloading for me. I don't like spending hours and hours at a reloading press. Maybe in the future that changes, but I move at light speed with my projects, with my life, with my work. I got no time really. I will make time to sharpen a knife. I mean, it's important to me for sure, but it's better to prevent the problem. So that's the subject of this video, a utility knife update, doo -doo 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 -doo. TMP. I hope everyone finds this video. It's gonna save you so much time if you just integrate one of these knives into your carry, your EDC carry, which to me means on your person. We'll get to the subject. And by the way, there is a standout member uh, model, I should say, of these knives, which I have shown multiple times on the videos. I will continue to do so as I advocate it again in your daily life. Okay, so yes, A10 sent on the table. Why do you have that, Nutton? First, it's cool. That's why. A10s are cool. Warthogs are awesome. Hogs are awesome. I am a frustrated A10 pilot. I am. I wanted to fly A10s out of pilot training. If you don't know, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, 21 years of flying service. I fought all the wars that came my way. In the massive and awesome KC-135, I had a very short tour, F-15s and T-38s and King Airs were my other aircraft. I really wanted A-10s out of pilot training when I went to Del Rio, Texas, but there were only, I think, just one fighter, one banked fighter out of my class. And he did not even go as an F-15 guy, Tom Smith. He got it, but he went to a banked fighter. That means he didn't go right to training into a cockpit. He went to a desk job for two and a half, three years, and then he was brought into the cockpit. It's all timing, so there just weren't that many fighter cockpits to go around. I really wanted an A-10. It didn't happen for me in my timing. So here's my message to the United States Air Force if you're watching this video. Hey, U.S. Air Force, I am inactive, ready reserve, whatever they call me. If war breaks out, I'm talking like Armageddon-style war, and you need to recall me, put me in the A-10, bro. That's right. Bring them out of mothballs. I'm your dude, man. I'm ready for CAS, close air support. Send me to RTU right now. I'll make time for it. And that way I'll be trained up, ready to go. 
But dude, you're 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 not young. So what? I can still fly this thing. I can fly the heck out of the A10. Give it to me, man. Show me where what needs to be blown up. I will do it. Guaranteed. This is a very cool model, by the way. It's a 172nd scale A10 Thunderbolt 2. I actually have the box here. Look at this job, paint job, man. Yeah, we'll get to the knives here in a second. You can fast forward if you're in a hurry. Or better yet, you can put it on two times speed right there on the gear icon if you're in a hurry. So I do that with a lot of YouTube videos I watch. You're still watching the video. I don't care if you do that. That is a sick paint job. No ordnance on this particular one and the gear's extended. In a way, it's kind of nice. The ordnance isn't on it. I'm talking like cluster bombs, rocket-assisted party favors and such. Uh, because sometimes they fall off. So really nice stand too. Look at the steel. It has two steel pins that come in here that really anchor it. I always super glue these down because these stanchions, extension arms, can come out. I just love that paint job. Oh, yeah, the box right here. So it's an easy model brand. Mm, I forgot exactly where I, I got it. If I can find it in the link below, I will give it to you. It's a great decoration. Here's their other paint schemes they have. All of them are excellent. I like the camel ones a little bit better than the standard Air Force Gray. Maybe I'll roll in some sweet hog footage, too. And there's some other easy models. Ah, dude, that's sick. That MiG-15 is awesome. F-18s. Super cool. Two-place. Look at this. Two-place. A-10. Straight wing F-84. If you're a Patreon member, go check out, if you haven't seen it already, the museum visit we did at Castle Air Force Base. It's Patreon-only content, of which I do a lot of. So join Patreon. One to five bucks a month is all it is. Totally worth it. You'll see videos over there at a much faster flow and content you'll never see here on the main channel because I give value to those guys who support me. <sighs> okay, thanks for bearing with me. I just had to get that off my chest. Yeah, eight, A-10s, dude. Air Force, uh, put me in training right now. Bring me out of retirement. Say, hey, we're going to train you up, and if something kicks off, you're going. I'm like, okay, cool. If I'm, if I'm in a wheelchair, if someone can just, I mean, years in the future, someone can just load me in there, I'll, I'll do it. I want to be part of the fight in an A-10. I dig it. Uh, this is actually F-35 Katana joint exercise patch in Japan. This is Last Suspects. A cool patch. I don't know how it's on there. It's just kind of cool. Okay, okay. Thanks for being patient. I, we're just talking about all kinds of stuff. Utility knives. I'm going to start with several models, and there's some that I'm going to show you or talk to that I don't have with me right now. So I, maybe I show you a screenshot or something like that. But again, foundational is you need to just carry them all the time. Please do so. Just carry them. The first up is going to be a Cobalt model 55906. So this one is from Lowe's. I've had these in operation for a long time in team, uh, not team P, in family life more than anything. Probably five years I've been using this model and it is excellent. It's about $13.50. It is a lockback and it has a top blade uh, retention mechanism like so. So you, and a lot of them are like this. So it's spring loaded and then you can just put that lock bar into the appropriate groove and you can adjust it. So they have two grooves in the top and I advocate using carbide blades like Fat Stanley Fat Maxes or something like that. And there's your adjustment. And this, I'll call it second generation, is so much better than the other ones. Like the Gerber EAB, I don't have on tabletop and I did review that like 10 years ago and it was great at, at the time, but you need a screwdriver to replace the blades. And that sucks, I, I, I'm not up for that. Uh, this one is easy, it's stable, and it I have never had a blade come loose, and it's super secure, and actually all the ones I'm showing you are super secure from what I know about them. I did engrave the side of it to remind me of the model number in case I show it some more. Yeah, I signed it, just did. And this has a rubber-covered handle. I don't really dig that so much. I don't like rubber-covered anything. Screwdrivers, you know anything pliers don't rubber cover it. i don't like it it just gets dirty it's grippy for this it's less of a player because i'm not carrying this in my pocket it's not this model is not part of my edc loadout it ain't it ain't it's home based so when packages arrive at the missile silo and i'm opening them this this model right here the 55906 is doing the the work here's a cool feature too is it has actually handle storage i'm sorry blade storage right here how cool is that? And it hasn't broken. I mean, this is, still works. These aren't carbide blades I have in there. They're probably just standard single metal instead of bimetal construction blades. And then you'll close it and snap it. Awesome. Standard lockback. Not a triad lock. No sexy terms here. 
No sexy steals in play. Yeah, now let me throw some more philosophy at you. And this makes the review interesting and I think, again, grounds it in reality. These suckers cut. I mean, it's one thing to get a knife that has a good geometry, whatever it is. Drop point, hollow ground, full flat ground. Maybe it's a super steel, L-Max, whatever. And no doubt they'll cut. And I've done cardboard cutting in front of the camera for many years. But the thing is, is they ain't going to cut like this. Because look at how thin these utility blades are. This one being a bimetal with a carbide edge on it. And some may be, there's different ones that are out there. I'm just saying go with an upgraded utility blade. But they're so thin, they don't have any drag. Their edge geometry is thin. And they are wicked sharp. I mean, sharpness is not even in question when you bring these suckers out and you start putting them into to play. I mean, they rip. And then, again, the benefit is when they do go dull, you just flip the blade over. Unlock it and flip the blade over. So... I wouldn't advocate, and this does have a pocket clip on it, although it's very high carry. You're going to have this portion right here sticking out of your pocket, which is uh, ex exceptionally much. It's just too much. I would not advocate. It's fat. Uh, I think it's relatively heavy. I think there's like 4.2 4 ounces. I know it's not that much, but wait. I'm going to get to the winner of the show here in a minute. Now, there's another one I don't have on tabletop. It's a Great Neck Model 12119. Great Neck 12119. It's about 10 bucks. It's less expensive than this one. It does have a thumb disc, so it looks like it might be oriented more towards lefties. I haven't used that one. I'll put a link below. Please use my purchase links to support the show. That seems like a great knife. And again, some of the models that are out now, maybe most of them, I, I don't really think you can go wrong with. They... they and I'm concentrating, by the way, on folding utility knives, not the Stanley standard utility knife. I have a video out there, maybe a couple, that I've covered those models before. I want something that I can EDC, that can go with me when I'm flying my A-10 in the future. You never know if I punch out, I have some cardboard to cut. Yes, I am kidding. I'm not kidding about flying the A-10, dude. I'm kidding about the box cutter would be like super important for me. No, all the ones I'm concentrating on are right now uh, folding knives. Cool. I actually have two of those cobalts. I accidentally brought this one up. So we have one in the garage. Oh, and that's another thing I do advocate is placing these in a location where you need them. If And I'm talking about just for home use. and Because they're so inexpensive, just place them there and it's almost a religion with us in the house to leave them there. Otherwise, you waste time. This video is about saving you time hunting out your knife man and yes i do have my sweet knife clipped to my my pocket for sure and it has been known to be used in those situations but i much prefer to go find my box cutter my utility knife better said and use that so keep it in a location and there it sits train your children to be careful with it it's very sharp it can do damage you know this dangerous things need a little bit of training no big deal Good model though, I like it. And uh, another one I don't have on the table is a Husky 3-pack. I did see this one am in Amazon. It's model number 14724. Those are the last five digits that I saw, 14724. It's $22 for a 3-pack. It's rated 4.5 stars in Amazon. It looks great. And the guys talking about it are bragging about it. They're like, yeah, the Husky is great. But it's just another option for their, for your use. Now, this one right here is... A Sheffield and this is model 10 4 ounces and it is representative of the I, I hate to use the word quality because none of these are like super high quality but I'll tell you what they're head and shoulders above what we used to have about 10 years ago and it's almost like the sport knife market has you know trickled down to the utility knife and that's what we're seeing this one in hot pink of course speaking of sexy Speaking of sexy, yeah. And that looks like a Kershaw clip on there. It really does. These are all carry tip down. We have the same type of blade retention in this Sheffield that we did in the other. So we can adjust it to the first slot or the second slot. I almost always run it in the second slot. This is a single metal blade. I haven't replaced it with a carbide yet, but I will. Trust me, I'll run this one until it's dull and then I'll swap it out. Now adjusting the pivot points may be a problem in some of these and you can notice they still have the same one. There might be a tool out there. I don't remember seeing a tool for it, but I've used this one like I've said for years as the same pivot point on it. 
and uh, I've never had to adjust it, so I'm not really worried about it. And these are beater tool knives, so I wouldn't have a problem at all just putting a, like an awl in there, two awls, and I could uh, probably fashion something in the shop to tighten them up. Let's see how this one deploys. Now this has an interesting ambidextrous. It's not a thumb stud. It's just kind of a circular serrated disc inset into the blade it works okay i think i prefer this one better and i forgot to show you this one because it just has you know more accessibility and if we look at the handle it is occluded with that deep rubber covered handle so it's not like super accessible it's kind of fun too carrying these knives because it's kind of like a sport knife. It's kind of like a tactical EDC blade. Yeah, it's a utility knife, but you're getting the enjoyment. And let's be honest, there is some enjoyment there of just deploying it. You know, it's kind of cool that you pop out your knife. Let me see if I can do a shake out on this. Now, nah, it's really stiff retention on that Sheffield. And this, again, is model 10668. I'm trying to shake it out, and it just, there's too much retention. I mean, that spring. Let me try this. Oh, it worked that way. Okay. I was grabbing it by the blade and that didn't work so good. But this way does. I could probably do this on camera. I hit the table. Probably cut it too. Standard. Don't get wrapped around the model numbers because they will change. Maybe they come, maybe they go. And uh, just look for similarities. Again, these are all super inexpensive. This one is like eight bucks, I think. The Sheffield 10668. And that brings us to the Gerber in orange something just tells me this is going to be the most popular popular one with you guys because probably it's a name you recognize gerber and i loved in the day that eab i really did and that's when i really started advocating carrying a utility knife on your person so this really isn't a new message but i think as years go by people forget it and there's a lot of new subs and viewers in tmp and they probably never watched that video so this is a Gerber in really cool orange. Has a clean pocket tip. Again, tip down. And this is a liner lock. 420J stainless steel liner on this side. And it's not lined on that side, nor does it have to be. This is not a high torsion knife. None of these are. These are utility cutters. This is called the Gerber Edge, as you can see. And we have a different blade retention mechanism. So now we have a spring-loaded lock bar but it's a little bit more elegant than these see we have kind of a, a whole channel locking thingamajig run on the top this one's real elegant albeit it's much thinner so i haven't hard used this one yet and is it you know is the blade going to pop out i highly doubt it because we're just doing linear cutting with our utility cutters that's all we're doing anytime we need to torque it and i said this in the eab review anytime you need to torque something this is not the knife you use these knives, especially the carbide ones, are really brittle. They'll break. And so you got to be careful. That if you need to do some torsion, it's time to break out a different blade, bro. What do I have here? Uh, I've got my Spyderco. Is this the Domino? Yeah. With my washer mod. Oh my gosh, nothing fancy. I still can't believe you put those washers on there. Uh, I don't care if you like it, bro. It's practical. It's first cool, man. And I can deploy this thing rapidly from the pocket. Yeah, this is a knife though I would not I would not hard use. I mean I wouldn't. Oh, speaking of edges, there's my edge right there, bro. Woo! See, I, I'm totally for sharp edges. I totally am. What I'm saying is that let's uh let's not make it a hobby. Let's don't gratuitously go dull my spider code domino. Now I have to go spend twenty minutes of my life go resharpening it when I could just burn a, a disposable blade. Boom, philosophy thrown down. Here's another one, and this is called the Hyper Tough. No, 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 no. And man, I love this one. I love this. Oh, I forgot to mention this one. Uh, the weight on it is lighter. It's three ounces, which is important to me. Now the camera's not really capturing the orange. The orange is really bright. It looks really dull in the camera. I'm looking through the viewfinder. It's bright, dude. So just take that into consideration. But this Hyper Tough is more like it. This is kind of getting to an EDCable utility knife. And the weight on this, I engraved it 2.6. So now that's a real, that's light too. I'm not saying it isn't. But this is thin. It has an integrated polymer clip on it, which I got to tell you, I kind of like. It reminds me of old school cold steel. And let's see if I have a cold steel here. I think I do. I think I have a Voyager with my 
clip mod. Oh, it's got the new clip on it. So it's this one right here, dudes. Yeah, so I, I don't have the one with the integrated polymer clip, which I love. They have brought that back. Go watch my Cold Steel catalog review. It's actually an online web page review, and we talk about that. Anyway, so I love this clip right here. It's just simple. The downside is it can break off. So if you're a tradesman or you're doing some good work, and this can grab and snap off. I've had that happen before. Uh, you might just, I don't know, put that into the mix of things, uh, you know, as you consider which one to get. This Gerber one is, of course, metal, and you can take it off going through the single-sided mini Torx pivot screw, which is cool. At least it's removable, so if you bent this one, you could bend it back. That is an advantage of the Gerber Edge. Now, this Hyper Tough model, it is 6834. I engraved it there so I wouldn't forget. Uh, wearing a standard blade right now, I'll swap out and put a bimetal in there later. But it's clean. It has really clean lines. I love the handle. It reminds me just a standard EDC blade. You know, FRN handle. But this is a nylon scale here. And then the retention on the blade is a little bit different. And maybe not quite as elegant as the other ones. I've got to lift it up like so. And get the blade out there. So it's not quite as easily accessible as the other ones I don't think because it has a recessed button right here on the spine but look how clean it is I mean you have some some really good lines here as opposed to something like this so this is faster to change out to adjust this is a little bit slower but I think once you get the hang of it you won't care and man is it clean really cool lock back on this one and then for deployment, shake out that way. Retention, really good retention. Reverse deployment. Notice this though, look at that dudes. Oh, as I popped it out, this kind of raised up a little bit. Let me try to do that again. Yep, if you shake it out like that. Maybe a disadvantage on the Hyper Tough is you don't have a deployment button or a thumb ramp or something to purchase on to get the blade out so it might be a two-handed affair that's why I'm shaking it out if I hold it this way and hold the button yeah that works so if you just kind of hold it right there slight disadvantage there in the Gerber edge so this functions as a thumb stud and it dual functions as the adjustment pivot right there I still like this one I like the handle I like how light it is it's got a big lanyard hole here the Gerber Edge has a smaller one if you need that. These two don't have it at all. Okay, and not on tabletop is a Sheffield 12113. Sheffield 12113, $8, 4 ounces. That one comes in blue anodized aluminum. Good looking blade. And it is a lockback. Uh, I like that one too. I wanted to get one for tabletop, didn't work out. And so I'm going to throw this out so it I don't know, just gets out there. If I wait, then it may never get done. Okay, and there's another one I'm not going to show, at least in person. It's the Vivreal, Vivreal HD Pocket Cutter, 13 bucks, rated four and a half stars. It's kind of heavy if their specs are right, 4.8 ounces, comes in silver and black, and it has a thumb disc. They brag about SK5 steel cutter blades that come with that one. It has kind of a big, goofy Wizard of Oz clip, kind of like some of the Kershaws have, and that might be a little bit of a showstopper for me. Um, and then the Stanley 10169. I think any of the Stanley cutters are good. I would go for something lean and trim, kind of like this Hyper Tough one. This is what I like. So it's thin. Look at the difference between this and the Gerber Edge. Clip notwithstanding. I mean, that's what I want. I want something thin and easy to carry because I'm advocating you carry your... <clears throat> EDC knife and your tactical blade with, with you at the same time. So, by the way, I am doing that. So, I, I showed you the Griptilian. That's my tactical blade and EDC blade. And then I have a Boker FR frame lock as my EDC blade right here, dudes. Woo! That's a different combo, nothing fancy. You know it, dude. Oh, I love this knife. This is reviewed... The uh, video will post when the viewers watch the vids quickly. It will post on Patreon uh, a lot quicker. Love this knife combo. Look how thin that is, dudes. But speaking of thinness, so the grip is not thin. 
it's a thick chunky knife but that's what we like about a griptilian because when we deploy it in hand it feels substantial we have a good you know a good gripping service on a griptilian and by the way i did kind of dremel this to improve the jumping somewhat i don't know why benchmade still can't get jumping down they cannot i i can't remember a benchmade knife that was jumped properly but i carry this one additionally because it doesn't weigh anything it's like 1.4 ounces this thing is look how thin it is getting to the utility knife so i'm advocating i know it's kind of kooky but you're carrying these two and you're carrying one of these but if we're going to carry three and maybe four as i do da -da 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 yeah, I do that all the day, all the day, man, all the time. I don't want it chunky. That's my point. Uh, you know, can, can you imagine carrying? I'm not doing that. That's crazy talk right there, dudes. Uh-uh, not going to happen. What I'm advocating, and here comes a winner of the contest, and I haven't seen anything supersede this knife yet. It's also a Sheffield product. This thing weighs 0.8 ounces. Let me just let that sink into your mind. 0.8 ounces it's not even an ounce it is model 1282 sheffield all plastic all polymer whoosh, utility knife this is the winner this is the best utility knife you can carry edc now if i'm at a i don't know a carpet store and i'm doing daily cutting um maybe i would opt for something more hd like these two right here or any one of these because this is all plastic Plastic pivot screw, plastic frame, plastic blade retention. But let me tell you, I've been using them for years now and none of them have failed on me. And I have several in rotation. Remember I said I'm putting them in all the different locations? Dudes, these are everywhere. There's one in the fanny pack. I carry one daily. There's one in the kitchen. There's one in the shop. There's one in the barn. They're everywhere because they're so inexpensive. I mean, these things are cheap. They're like five bucks. And they weigh 0.8 ounces. The Sheffield 1282 wins over all of these. Even if you have to do HD cutting. Because like I've said, I've done a lot of cardboard cutting with the 1282. Haven't failed yet. Remember what I said. It's linear cutting you're doing. So you're not tweaking. You're not doing this. You're just cutting cardboard. Opening a package. Maybe cutting some rope. That's it. Anytime we need to tor uh, you know, put some torsion on the bar uh on the blade this is not what we want to use again i think everyone knows that and this is wearing one of my carbide blades because this was in use i wore the other one out and look how easy that blade was to take out dudes i mean holy cow it's probably easier than any other knife on the table it's just a push button right here on the spine you can adjust it and it's it's freaking perfection and then this is your locking mechanism so it's fully ambidextrous for you lefties jardine Big old lanyard hole if you want it. Dudes, no clip because it's too small. It'd be like putting a, a clip on a ladybug by Spyderco. It doesn't make sense. You don't need a clip on it. Yeah. What do I do with this? I just run it in my pocket. So it's usually in my left pocket. If I'm carrying some type of BDU pants, it'll run in my lower left cargo pocket because it's so light you won't even know it's in there. Let me show you its size by way of comparison to a standard of measure you might know. The SOG Flash 1, speaking of an EDC knife. So it's basically the same overall length as a SOG Flash 1, dudes. Sheffield Model 1282. Yeah, oh my gosh, what am I talking for? 28 minutes on freaking, freaking utility knives. That's pretty funny. It's an interesting subject, though. This is the one I would get. Now, if I were to rank order just the ones on the table, I did mention some other ones, and they are all good. Some are excellent. My phase, mm, I still like the Hyper Tough. I really do. I like how thin it is. I like how light it is. I like the trimness of its mechanism. I can take the quirks of the lock button. Not that big of a deal. Um, uh, you know, the, it doesn't have a thumb stud on it, but I don't know. I just like it. I, because it doesn't have a thumb stud, I'll call it a tie between that and the Gerber Edge. Yeah, if, and I'm talking for around the house use. For EDC, which one would I carry between these two? Definitely the Hyper Tough. This one, way ahead of the pack, but a distant second will be this one. That one's a way distant second. These two are just too heavy for me because of my system that I've explained to you. It's not the only knife I'm carrying. It's usually knife number five. I'm, I'm not even making that up. It's knife number five that I'm carrying. I know, it's insane. 
that I carry that many blades. But I do, and most of them are so lightweight, they, they are carryable. You know what I'm saying? Go look at my gear reviews, man, on the B channel. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, we're not talking sexiness here. We're not talking L Max, S30, S90, S110, <laughs> CPM 154, titanium frame lock. Now, this is basic, basic stuff, but there's some beauty here, man. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And the eye of the beholder who's done a lot of cutting will see the value in having this knife on your person all the time. It will save you time. I mean, for you to get in the sharpener and put the edge back on your beloved high-end carry knife just takes time. If you have a lot in your life, I say rock on, go for it. But if you're busy, like some of us, um, minimize it. When there's a hard cutting chore that I have to do, heavy-duty cutting chore, I don't, I don't reach for my tactical folder or my EDC knife unless I don't have an option. If I don't have an option, sure, it'll step up and get it done. What I do, oh, by the way, there's that clip. Whoop. Lynch is the clip. Uh, what I do is this. So I reach for my Chef, Sheffield 1282 and it does the brunt work. And it's so easy to sharpen. I mean, brand new blade just like that. Just by swapping it in. How easy is that? The most important knife review you'll ever watch. See you later. Nothing fancy.